Hello all my fellow network engineers out there on the internet. Welcome to our vlog series, Demystifying Ansible for ACI, where we go over topics that involve using Ansible to get things done on your Cisco ACI fabric. My name is James Kaiser, and I'll be your host for the duration of this series. Today we'll be going over signature-based authentication for ACI using certificates in Ansible. This is part two or follow up to the first installment using password based authentication. I mentioned in the last video that you could trigger an anti denial of service feature in ACI that can throttle your playbook. Using signature based authentication will not only avoid that pitfall, but give your playbook an increase in performance. Not much has changed, only a few things has changed since the last video. We'll go over those changes here shortly. But the playbook has gotten longer, especially when you take into account that we'll be programmatically generating our certificate. AAA user and password, assigning that certificate to our user, then using that account for all subsequent tasks or requests. I'll even go over one quick part that'll remove that user and certificate if you want to do a little cleanup action after your playbook ends. So with that, let's talk about our files. The first file up is a host file. Nothing's changed since the first video. Still, we have our group in square brackets called APIC. And we have our variable APIC underscore IP in double braces, double quotes. This is so that, again, when we ask for the input in the VARS prompt module, uh, that will populate this variable with the input that we put in. Again, nothing's changed. Same old, same old host file, inventory file called that we call hosts. Next up is our signature auth YAML file. And again, not much has changed. We have our host as a group APIC and the error, any errors fatal is true. This will stop the play in the event of a problem and won't proceed. We still have our var section. Still going to run Ansible connection local with the Python interpreter set to Python 3. This way we know to run these tasks locally and you use Python 3 as our interpreter. Our certificate user is a variable called cert underscore user and we're going to call that lumos underscore Ansible. Our tenant name, TN underscore name, is still going to be lumos-test. And our task that we're going to be testing this with is still going to be the creation of a bridge domain. So we still have BD100, and we're going to be putting that in the VRF, JK-VRF. Now, if you notice the bonus footage in the last video, I had these two variables, one of them comment out, status deleted being commented out with status created modified being the one in play. Now... I showed this real quick so that if you comment one out, you basically set your JSON payload to deleted and or created modified. This will delete or create whatever it is you're trying to push in the, in the payload. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. I left it in there purposely. I'm going to delete this here as I want to show you something later on down the line. And we'll get to that in a second. Under our VARS prompt section, Nothing's changed here. Still the same. We asked for our APIC IP. When we prompt, we prompt using enter APIC IP. Private no, again, means this information can be seen on the screen. And when I set the default as 10.40.1.24 as my APIC's IP address, I will not have to type in any information that is put in as default. It will automatically populate the variable with that data. Makes it nice and easy for us lazy people. User pass, same thing as the last video. We're asking for the APIC username. We're asking for the APIC password. Private yes will not show that information on the screen. So we can rest assured that prying eyes won't see. And unsafe yes means to be aware that um, unsafe characters will could be input like asterisks or backslashes or dollar signs or something. Now, I removed the status variable from the top before. And the reason why I did that is I wanted to show you how we can use VARS prompt to actually determine what that status will be. So if you see down here, I have my underscore status. That's the name of the prompt. And I, and I say simply, I say press C to create object or press D to delete the object. Private no, and the default is C to create. Moving down to the task sections, we'll see why this is relevant. When you go down to the task sections, I set a fact, I call it the status, the underscore status. And the status is set to create and modified. But I invoked the when module under the set fact that says when my underscore status is equal to C. So whatever is pressed during the user input 
when they ask to create the object or delete the object from my status, whatever you press there will set my underscore status to C or D. If it's C, the first set fact will run, created modified. But if you look below that, I also do a set fact setting the same the status variable. Only this time it's set to deleted. I use the when my underscore status equals D. So if I press C, the first one will run. If I press D, the second one will run. And that will set the status to either created, modified, or deleted. And when you get down here, you'll see whatever that is will be populated here. So it's a nice, convenient way to not have to toggle something in your playbook. You can merely ask what you're looking to do at that time and either press C or D. Now, I read somewhere on the internet, and I don't recall where, that said if your play, if your player playbook becomes about a hundred lines, you need to really think about breaking it up. And I thought that's a good idea. I like that advice. I think that's a good, a good practice to follow. So I did an include tasks right here, and, and I'm calling a user generation YAML. And this is where we're going to programmatically generate our user for use in the subsequent task down here for the bridge domain. I'm going to switch over to user generation YAML. So the first part of user generation YAML invokes the command module and we're using, and we're going to invoke the open SSL command. Now mo most Linux distributions that I know of and Mac OS distributions come with open SSL. So you shouldn't have to install it, but you might have to install it. So if you do, just know you're going to need OpenSSL to generate the key. We run the key, OpenSSL, with the proper parameters, RSA 1024. We can make that 2048 if you wanted to make it a little more secure. This is the amount of days it will take before it expires. This is a self-signed certificate. And when we output our key using the key out, we're going to say the certificate user basically naming the key and the certificate the same name as the certificate user to keep things simple. So the key will be lumos underscore ansible dot key and the certificate will be lumos underscore ansible dot CRT. Uh, the subject has our CN and our, you know, our organization and our country in it for the, the certificate. After we generate the cert, now we have a certificate file on our hard drive. We then need to take that certificate and assign it to a user. What I'm doing in the next task is I'm invoking the ACI REST module and I'm going to push content for AAA user. I'm going to create a new user that will use this certificate for, uh, for all the subsequent plays. To break down this play, we have our host, inventory underscore host name, which is the APIC that'll get populated as it cycles through, as Ansible cycles through whatever host it's acting on at that moment. We have our username and password that we set from the VARS prompt module, whatever we typed in, whatever our, our admin username, our admin user account, what its password was. Use SSL, yes, means use SSL. Validate certs, false means don't validate certificate because we're using self-sign, it's not gonna be trusted. We're pushing to the APIMO uni.json path and our method is post. We're posting content to the uni path. And our content, AAA user. Now, if you look, we have our DN. And our DN is the path, and Lumos underscore Ansible, the user that we created in the variable earlier is what's going to get populated here along with its name. And the password is the password. We're just basically grabbing the password that we had for our admin account. The reason why I do this is because I generally delete this account when we're done. Yeah, I don't need it lingering and I can easily generate a new cert with a new user on the fly if I need if I need to. So this is all the JSON content that you're going to need to create this user. Now what I do is I, I set all this to static. I don't need, I mean you could, you could create new variables to change all of this data that's in here. But for the most part, I'm kind of giving this user uh, full read write privilege access, right? Write priv to role admin and read all. So he can read all, write all, and, and, it, and it's good. 
Then down here, for simplicity, uh, and because it's actually one of the Ansible modules that works well, instead of using the ACI REST module, I decided I'll use the ACI AAA user certificate to assign the certificate to my user. And here, again, this is another user-based authentication task because, again, we don't have a cert we don't have a cert to do anything with yet. We're, we're, we're making that. So down here, we have the triple user is going to be cert user. Here's our certificate name, which will also be the same as the cert user and the certificate. Now to get the certificate, what I do is I, I call the Ansible lookup filter. And when we look, we do the lookup, we're looking up a file and the file name is called, is going to be called, Lumos underscore Ansible dot CRT, what we had before. And I'm just using variables to call these things, make life easy for ourselves. So we, to kind of quickly go over, we generate a certificate, we create a new user, and then we assign that certificate to the user. Now, once that task, user generation task is complete, because we called it here in the play, and we completed that play of that task. We're going to come back here and finish off. Next thing to do is add the bridge domain. So now here's where things got a little bit different with the task. We're still using the inventory host name to call up the APIC that we're, we're, we're on. We're still using the username, except this time we're going to use the cert user username. We're going to grab our private key and our certificate. And we're going to use that as our authentication piece. So if you notice, there's no password. So when we go to run this play, we are not running it using user base authentication. We are running it using signature base authentication. Same thing applies down here for the USSL and validate certs. And here is our content, the bridge domain. Now, one quick thing I'll go over is the the underscore status. So before I had status set to status. Now I'm setting it to the underscore status because if you remember before, we're going to ask for user input, press C or D, and we set that to my status. And when, depending on the value of my status, will determine what the value of the status will be. So I guess with that, let's go ahead and run the play and show you guys what is happening. I'm going to be using the dash VVV option again so that we can see what's going on. So real quick, before we run the play, I just wanted to show you nothing in the bridge domain and no Lumos user, just all regular users that we have here. And again, to run this play, we're going to type ansible-playbook-i to specify the inventory host file we called hosts. We're going to run our signature auth YAML and dash VVV to turn up the verbose level. I'm going to use my default here because I'm lazy, except for the password. And I'm going to say C to create the object. And that's it. It just ran. I'm going to go over here. And as you can see, there's our bridge domain. And here is our AAA user. And as you can see, they're part of these security domains. And here's our certificate. And that's it. Now, if I ran the same one again, and I'll go back to our bridge domain. This time I'm going to type D for deleted. And as it runs, there went our bridge domain. So let's scroll back in the buffer and see what exactly happened here. We started the play, gathered some facts. We changed setting status to created modified with skip because we changed it to deleted. So deleted was the one that, that took. 
We called our user generation playbook, which generated this certificate. Down here, you can see we use the command OpenSSL. This is the key we created. This is the certificate we created. The name here was our, our organizational unit and our CN. And this was the command that we ran. Then we created a certificate based authentication user called Lumos Ansible. And these are the, this is the JSON payload that was pushed to create that. As you can see, no password. And here's our user. Then we took the certificate and we, we associated the certificate that we generated and associated it with the Lumos Ansible user. Here was our certificate data. And then we went ahead and added the bridge domain. Here was the bridge domain. And as you can see here, we used the module arguments certificate name was Lumos Ansible. This was our content. And this was the username down here in which we used to push that that JSON payload. I'll scroll back up and I'll show you real quick here under this one, creating the certificate user that we used admin to push that test. So we were using password-based authentication and we used our admin account to create the cert or to create the user and associate the certificate with it. But then for the bridge domain, we used the Lumos Ansible user and certificate-based authentication. Now, I'm not going to run this one, but we're going to go over it real quick. When you're done with the play, all you would need to do is run this ACI REST module that will take the AAA user that you created, cert user, which we called Lumos underscore Ansible, and it says the status to deleted. So that user will be removed after the play is, is run along with the certificate. Uh, keep in mind that for compliance reasons, you are creating and deleting a user that may or may not have been part of your change request. So just keep that in mind. Uh, a compliance report will show that a user was created and a user was deleted. Be sure to tune in next time. Our next video is going to be about looping. So I'm going to go over how to do loops, how to send a lot of data into your APIC using Ansible, uh, let's say you want to create 100 bridge domains. I'm going to show you using loops how we're going to do that and create you 100 bridge domains. Uh, so be sure to tune in and catch that. Thanks, guys.